This is the Everest Max gaming keyboard from Mountain. The best way to approach this is to take everything you think you know about gaming keyboards and throw it out the window. This one offers flexibility and customization on a level you've never seen before. The box it comes in deserves an award. It's very sturdy, and it's obvious that a lot of effort went into its design. All right, so we have the keyboard in its own compartment right on top here, and this is the main section. They call it the core, and it's just a TKL layout. And you can buy just the core on its own if you don't want all the other modular stuff that this Max version comes with, although I don't really know why you'd want to do that once you see what the Max can do. This is a detachable wrist rest. It's very nice and plush, almost like the memory foam feel you get with a nice cushion pair of headphones. Should be comfortable to use if you like having a wrist rest on your keyboard. The rest of the stuff's all tucked away down here in this little drawer section thingy. And every piece in here is individually packaged in its own box. It's a really nice and clean way to ship a keyboard. And it's also a really nice box to keep around for any spare parts or pieces that you're not using all the time. This first box here is your USB cable. There's actually two cables in here. One is your main power cable. It's two meters long, USB A to C. And we also have this little USB C extension cable that's just 15 centimeters long. This box has the modular numpad. This is the main standout feature on the Everest Max. It's got four fully customizable buttons with built-in displays, and on the bottom, it's got this little slider that'll let you deploy the USB-C connection on either the right or the left side, depending on where you plan to attach it to the core. And it also tucks away in the middle for an extra little bit of protection when you're not using it, so if you're gonna throw it in your backpack or something like that, it should be nice and safe. This box has the included multimedia panel. It's got a USB-C connector where it attaches to the core, and you can mount this on either the right or left side of the keyboard. You just line it up with the connector on the board and it pops right in there. Or you can take it off of there and just throw it on the other side if you want. And this last box right here has some accessories including some different switches that you can test out on the board, a standard escape key, and the removable magnetic angle adjustment spacers. This here is a key cap and key switch combo puller. The wired ends can fit over the keys and then they just pop off really easy just like that. And the board's hot swappable so you can use the other end of this little tool to grab a hold of the switch and pull it out if you're going to change them. Underneath, there's a ton of grip. Nice high surface area rubber pads, even on the little feet at the back. For angle adjustment, you can remove these feet and they're just held on there with magnets, really strong magnets, by the way, so they're not gonna feel loose at all. Once you have those off, what you do is you take one or two of these extra pieces and stack them onto there to increase the angle. It's quite a bit different than the typical flip out feet that most keyboards have, but it's quick and easy and works just as good, if not better. Just don't lose any of those extra spacers. The bottom of the board has a bunch of cable routing channels, enough of them that you should be able to find a spot for your cable that's not gonna get in the way. And I need to draw attention to the fact that this cable's fully removable. A lot of full-size boards have fixed cables for some reason. It's something I find really annoying because I don't have the option to use my own cable if I want, and it can be less convenient when trying to maneuver the keyboard around stuff on your desk. Now you can use the smaller cable here and that's gonna give you a connection point that's not right underneath the board, and that can make disconnecting and moving the board around a little bit quicker and easier. If we wanna add on the numpad, it works the same way in terms of the angle, the way you set it. You pop off the stock feet, add the spacers, put the feet back on, and we're good to go. To connect this piece to the core, you just slide the USB-C connector to whichever side you need and then plug it in. It's as simple as that. Now we have a full-size standard layout. And if you wanna take this off again, it just pulls out really easy. We can switch that connector to the other side and install it on the left side of the board just like that. This is the first keyboard I've ever tried that can do something like this, and I think it's awesome because it gives me the opportunity to customize my layout based on my setup. Something I noticed with this design though is the connection between the core and the numpad modules isn't very rigid. If you pick it up by the core, the numpad sags pretty hard and might fall off if you're not careful. So if you're gonna move the whole setup, you should either take the numpad off first or make sure you support both sides at the same time. The wrist rest is excellent. Very plush, very soft, and comfortable. Connecting it's super easy, you just push it onto the front of the board and the built-in magnets will pull it into position. I gotta say, it's the most comfortable wrist rest that comes on a stock gaming keyboard that I've seen so far. Now believe me when I say this board's built like a tank. It's on the heavier side, weighing in over 1.3 kilograms, but that weight's coming from the stellar build quality. The bottom's plastic, but the top section's made from what looks like two layers of aluminum. You can see the RGB light bar sandwiched between the two plates. This gives the board a very strong and rigid feel, and you can see that here from this super scientific bendy test where we apply a brute force algorithm to the center span and measure any deflections. The finish is gorgeous with a deep brushed look around the edges and an unfinished or machine type of look on the faceplate. In terms of materials, build quality, and aesthetics, the Everest Max does everything right. 
Mountain threw in a USB pass-through port on here. Some people might not think that's a big deal, but let me tell you, if you get used to having one of those, it's the best thing ever. It can really make your life a lot quicker, simple, and easier, or at the very least, I guess, it can make it a lot quicker, simple, and easier to just be lazy. The multimedia panel has the usual media controls you'd expect to see on a premium full-size keyboard, but what makes it really cool, aside from being modular, is the display dial. It's like a volume wheel on steroids. It's got a built-in IPS panel that can be customized to show whatever image you want. For me though, I think the best part about this is that it's multi-purpose. If you press the little button next to it, you can cycle through different commands and settings right here on the fly without having to jump into the software. It's a super quick and easy way to change settings. The numpad includes four customizable display keys. These are pretty cool. You can add your own image to change up the look and they can be programmed to run shortcuts, macros, or launch applications. But as cool as they are, I have one small complaint. The resolution's not the greatest. You can clearly see the pixels, especially around any curved edges. Some higher resolution displays would be nice to see on a future model. The standard keycaps on the main keys are pretty standard. They're just ABS, nothing special. You can order a set of PBT caps for Mountain, but that's obviously gonna cost extra. There's not much to say about these stock caps because they're pretty much the same as any other stock ABS caps. So this model that I'm testing in this video is powered by Cherry MX Red switches. They're linear, so they're designed to be quick and smooth without any tactile or clicky feedback. I like red switches for my regular day-to-day -day keyboards. I find them good for gaming, but also good for like regular working, typing, editing, whatever you're doing workflow as well. But if you don't like reds, don't worry because the board's fully hot swappable so you can drop in any compatible switch you like. More importantly though, Mountain included pre-lubed cherry stabilizers to smooth out the bigger keys like shift, enter, and space. These stabilizers make the bigger keys feel the same no matter where you press on them, whether it's on the edges or right in the middle. They also help reduce those annoying rattling or pinging sounds that you can get from mechanical boards. Here's a quick sound test. So as somebody that's already used to red switches, there was really no adjustment period for me when I switched over to the Everest Max. If you're not used to that linear response, your mileage may vary. I really like the feel of the stabilized keys. I felt like that's something I noticed. It kind of stands out. They just feel more sturdy with less wiggle compared to most other keyboards that I've tested. And it has this nice clean sound as you've just heard in the sound test. Some mechanical keyboards don't do so well when it comes to noise, but this one does a good job. By far, my favorite part about gaming with the Everest Max is that modular design. I'm an FPS gamer and I run a ridiculously low sensitivity. And that means I have to make huge mouse movements when the action really picks up. And what ends up happening is I run my hand into the side of the keyboard. Yes, I could downsize it to a TKL or 60% board to get some extra space, but I use the numpad way too much in my workflow and those smaller boards just slow me down. Now with this, I can have my full layout when I'm working and then pop the numpad off when I'm gaming to get some extra space for my mouse. I kind of feel stupid for not trying this keyboard sooner because the design's perfect. It's like they made it just for me. On the software side, Mountain has its own app you can download called Basecamp. You can do all the usual stuff here that you'd expect like customize keys, set macros, and configure the lighting effects. You can go through and set up the display dial how you want it. There's a bunch of settings and options there. And there's a section to change up some of your system settings too, like disabling the Windows key, for example. Saying the Everest Max is unique is an understatement. Keyboards from all the major brands tend to be pretty similar in terms of specs and features, but this one really does a good job at setting itself apart. Its innovative design brings new features that elevates not only the gaming experience, but even just everyday type of stuff too. The only downsides for me are the low resolution LCD panels on the display buttons, somewhat flimsy connection between the numpad and the core, and the RGB lighting isn't the brightest and seems to come up a little short in terms of preset effects. But none of those things affect the performance and obviously that's what really matters. The Mountain Everest Max is easy to recommend to enthusiasts who can appreciate the attention to detail, premium build, and amazing versatility. Full specs, details, and some purchasing links are gonna be down in the description. Make sure you check that stuff out. Give the video a thumbs up and get subscribed for more content and we'll see you soon.